All right, guys, welcome to the Tuna Status Podcast. I got my guy here. Darius Cozy. Oh, that's it? <laughs> nice one. and simple. <laughs> Either one. Yeah, we're here to chop it up and just talk about a few things. The car scene, um, his history within the car scene, shows how he feels about the scene now. Um, and I seen you switched up some wheels. How you feel about rear wheels, rep wheels, uh, rep parts, the whole nine? Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, I've uh, been in a couple car groups, so, you know, we're going to get the full details of everything that's going on. So, let's start with the history. How did you get into cars? Damn. Um, cars, shit. What really made me, like, kind of fall in love with it from the beginning, I had a neighbor that lived across the street from my mother's crib growing up. Yeah. I had a black Integra coupe. From the moment I seen that thing, I was like, oh, yeah, nah, I need one of those. Yeah. Since then, I've had seven. Shit. What kind of Integra? It was a coupe. Um, don't know what the fuck he had in it. Was way too young. Okay, okay, okay. By the time I was old enough to know that car, I've been gone. Oh man, would you have snatched it off his hands if you could have? If I could have, one hundred percent. Oh shit. Especially if it stayed, if it stayed how it was at the time, for sure. Oh shoot. So you said you had seven. Yeah. Why'd you go through so much, and why'd you keep so many? <laughs> uh, a few of them were complete pieces of shit. Yeah. That's the easiest way to put it. Just. Yeah. Terrible fucking cars. Mm-hmm. Um, one of them was a terrible choice on getting rid of it because the kid that ended up buying it, it went through probably four or five different people's hands after that and ended up just a show. Jesus. Yeah, yeah I've been there and it sucks. It not, sucks to see something you put your passion into. So back then, were you more of an all-motor guy? Were you a looks guy? Like, what was your style? Uh, I, honestly, I've always kind of just been based off of looks. Like, the fast shit is cool, but, like, where are you going fast at? Yeah, true. Well, police station. <laughs> <laughs> so you moved on with the Teggy. What was next for you? Shit. Uh, after the last Integra, I think I got my E90 after that. Okay. And I had the E90 for maybe like two months. Okay. And that shit was gone. Why'd you get rid of the E90? It's a BMW, bro. We, I don't know how to feel about that, bro. It's I don't a BMW, know how to, bro. I don't know how to feel about that, but all right. We're going to let that one No, start. no, no. I've, I've always been like a Honda guy, so okay. I learned cars through Honda shit. All so right. going into a BMW, was like, bro, I don't know shit about this car. Yeah, BMW's an expensive path to kind now, of like Luckily, car. I had DJ. This mm-hmm. motherfucker knows everything about BMW. Shout out to this thing. Yeah, you know what I'm so saying? Balance Auto, shout out to them. Make sure you go follow them. Absolutely. All go right. follow that. But um, yeah, bro, so the little shit that I did learn during that time period of having it was mm-hmm. from him, and then I was like, ah, let me get rid of this shit real quick. All right, cool, Made a couple cool. dollars on it, moved on to the next thing. So now you're moving on, you got the cars, you got the builds, I'm assuming you were outside. How was it you interacting with groups, or did you go to shows first, or did you just find your own like click to kind of like mess with? So originally, it was just going to like random shows. Honda Day, fucking Fuddruckers meets, mm-hmm. going down to the races onto yeah. random shit, IFO, stuff like that. Yeah. And how were shows for you back then versus kind of like now, though? Uh, back then, shows seemed better because I wasn't like fully involved in the scene. So mm-hmm. it was just like, oh, all right, cool. Everything looks better from the outside as opposed to yeah. being in it. And then it's like, nah, this shit's not really all that. Yeah, yeah, that happens, that happens. Now, how long, I mean, so you was pulling up Dolo or was you kind of like riding with some people? Mix of both. Mix of both. So how long? Because I mean, out here in Boston, we got teams, we have clubs, we have, you know, just groups of people because we all know what it's like when you're pulling up. It's different. It's a whole different vibe because you can, when you're going to a show by yourself, you're waking up early, you just cruise on the highway and that's cool. But we all hit the moments where it's just like you're cruising all the way back and a park fails. Yeah. And then you're just seeing people rolling by you and stuff like that. But then when you get that solid group of friends, you know, even from either breaking down from a part or even just getting pulled over by a steady coming back from broke. Um, <laughs> your crew's waiting for you at the next exit. Oh, yeah. You know, nobody really dips out on you. It's just that nobody wants to be caught with nah, you. 100%. You know, so. Fully respectable move. How long was it until you kind of like grew into like finding your own group or space? Uh, to be honest with you, bro, I was kind of on and off with like the car scene shit for a little bit over yeah. the years from like when I originally started liking cars and going to like little pop up shows or whatever yeah. to actually being in like a club. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Quote unquote. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, bro, it was. I mean, even like, so being fully active in the scene has been maybe four years now. Okay, okay. But like, but being, that's still some time because, yeah. yo, things change so fast. Like, trends change so fast. Before it was, hey, everything is static. Let's vote about going as low as we can to performance to, hey, everybody's got to get bags. Now, three piece wheels are getting more affordable and everything like that. 
How do you feel about the three piece wheels coming in? And I mean, now you can get three piece wheels on payment plans, like which is is honestly fucking crazy. Like <laughs> <laughs> you can get three piece. I'm bro. I'm the king of finding real wheels for yeah. shortbread. Mm -hmm. So you can get real wheels for cheap money. So how do you feel good, about good real wheels with like pretty good specs mm -hmm. for short money? So what do you respect more? Because I mean, like, do you respect a clean build even if it's on reps that tap into the theme or? Just a slap together car that looks like it was built for the internet. If you want the truth, I hate themed cars. Yeah. So you got to be real specific on what you mean by theme. Okay, so like it's a um, so let's say you have like OEM plus theme, or like this is just a cool car theme, or you know you got a Batman car theme. Nah, 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 not as far as that. <laughs> but even if those guys still put a lot of work, because underneath it all, the car looks way cleaner mm, than, than somebody shit. with clap quarters and sure. also the messed up shit and everything like that. But, you know, it's always been for a long time, rear wheels versus rev wheels. <laughs> <laughs> shit, thank you. Um, it's always been rear wheels versus rep wheels. And now even these wheels that were considered from rep companies, they're actually starting their own three-piece lines and some of the designs are really nice but when i say a clean build so let's say you got a kid that comes in uh wrx blah by um and his car slammed but he's on odd hands if it looks good it looks good fitment's good everything's cool but then you see a kid with an accord and he's got 19 by 12, negative 15, just, ridiculous, just, just ridiculous all shit. just full tilt and clap quarters. Like, I feel like there's a conflict with the scene because now that kid's getting more respect versus that kid that's on the reps. How do you feel about it? Uh, me personally, bro, I at one point in time, I was like, oh, no, nah, fuck rep wheels. Yeah. After thinking on it for a little bit and obviously going through wheels and being more like involved in the scene, like, mm -hmm. I don't really, personally, I don't give a fuck if you're on reps. Yeah. You got good fitment, your car looks nice, cool, it could be reps. Mm -hmm. I'm not buying them. Yeah. But if somebody else does, it's like, all right, bet. Like, you're on reps, that's cool. Like, all right, bet. You so, spent your bread on it. I don't give a fuck. So you said you copped a deal off the wheels. What was the best deal that you found for wheels? Hands Shit. down. Shit. Um, well, I just bought back two of my old sets of wheels. Okay. That I got for short money. Um... I just bought my Leons back mm -hmm. for a real good price. I got them shits back for 16. No shit. Sold them for a lot higher than that. Mm -hmm. Need some work to get back to what they were, but that's cool. But mm -hmm. then I also bought my Euro lines back that I had on the, the ILX originally. I bought them shits back for pretty much a crackhead price. So now you have two sets of wheels for the build? Technically three, because I still got my WCI stock. No shit. All right, so now you brought up the ILX. How did you... What made you say you wanted to get that car and build that car? Bro, to be completely honest with you, I wanted to get an Accord. Yeah? I wanted to get an Accord. Why did you want an Accord? This was before they were just giving them shits away for free. <laughs> <laughs> it seemed yeah. like everyone was just getting them shits for free at one point in time. Mm -hmm. um, and that was before I got my Civic, my Temp Okay, gen. okay. So I didn't end up getting the Temp Gen, the, the temp gen Accord. And I ended up getting the Civic because they wanted way too much bread for the Accord. Mm -hmm. I was like, that's, that just doesn't make sense. Yeah, everything's up. Everything's up right now. Now, this is when they were still low. Mm -hmm. Fam, I got the, the Civic for 23K brand new year sure. of. So like, sure. All right, that's calm. Nobody ever drove the shit. Mm -hmm. I got exactly what I wanted. Mm -hmm. Sure. Money. Found out a couple months later when obviously COVID hit and all that bullshit. Like yeah. a year or so later, bro, everything through the roof. No shit. So with the, with the ILX shit... It came time for me to get rid of the Civic because mm -hmm. I was kind of just over it. And then I had it as a lease. Yeah. Dickhead shit. Never do that again. <laughs> <laughs> Never do that again. That was a, the real stupid move. But um, it's real confessions because a lot of people, are, not to knock them, but a lot of people out here modifying leases and yeah. we see it outside. So. Oh, no, 100%. And then you look at that 3 year mark on the IG page and mm -hmm. all the cars are gone and I got something else. Parked it cheap. Oh, yeah. Parked no, it real sure cheap. Money. Sure money. Mm -hmm. So it was time to get rid of that. So I was like, all right, cool. Ended up getting a good deal. Accurate bought that shit back for Mad Sheet. Mm -hmm. But during that time, for like a couple months before, it was ready for me to get rid of the car. Yeah. I was like, all right, what the fuck do I get now? Like, mm -hmm. do I just pull the trigger on the Accord? Mm -hmm. Do I get a TLX? Do I go BMW? Do I get another Benz? And I was like, all right, cool. Let me get something that I don't see often. True. So I stumbled across a couple people from New York that mm -hmm. had them. 
So two kids more specifically in New York that had them. Mm-hmm. I'm like, all right, cool. These are dope. Let me look around. Start looking at more ILXs, more ILXs. And I'm like, all right, there's in total, even current day, I've had the car for two years. There might be maybe in total across the country, 15 people that have like cool ones. That's a small And 15 market. is a stretch. Yeah, that's a small It like market. really depends on what you classify as a cool car. So like out of that 15, there's maybe five that I would like, if I had the option to build my car that way, I would have built those five cars out of okay. the 15. So, and that's another thing too. It's like when you're building a car and you're in the scene and you try to stand out from amongst a group of people, you don't want to be boxed in the same with the same mods and build template and all that stuff like that. I picked the impossible car. How is it modifying and finding parts for a car that's so different? There's in the scene? no parts for that car. Yeah. Everything is trial and error. Take shit from this. Hope it fits. If it doesn't, all right, cool. I just waste the bread on it. Yeah. If it does fit, perfect. I got something that nobody else has until everyone starts riding dick on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. So now you have ILX, you're outside, and it's garnering attention from yeah. different so, people, so. different groups, you know, different shows. Um, how do you feel about when you started bringing the ILX out to shows now? What was that like? What was the response for you there? Uh, I mean, being the only one with that car out here, really, yeah. it's like, all right, cool. Like, my car don't look like nobody else's shit. Mm-hmm. So, like, that's nice. It's not me pulling up to a show and say, I did get the Accord. Yeah. There's 30 other people with the Accord. It's a big category to judge. It's, it's, <laughs> it's retarded. They mm-hmm. should just do strictly Accord shows at this point. Yeah. Um, but then I could have got something else. Like, all right, cool. I could have got WRX. Mm-hmm. Good chance you're gonna see at least four or five WRXs at a show. Yeah, trust me, I know. <laughs> it's like I know. shit like that. Or even if, all right, cool, I can go through the list of BMWs. Mm-hmm. Like, all right, you're gonna see a variety of BMWs at shows. Mm-hmm. Do I wanna pull up and I got four of my like my boys mm-hmm. that got BMWs? Like, all right, cool, now we're just all twins. For me, no, I don't I wouldn't wanna do it, but mm-hmm. I also don't mind when niggas do do it. Yeah. Like this shit don't bother me. It's like, all right, cool, like you did. You niggas technically have the same car, mm. but you did your shit this way. He did his shit this way. You don't have the same car anymore. So now at the shows, do you feel like the car should garner the attention that it should have, or it didn't get the attention it should have? Because it's weird in a space when you show up with a car that's different at these car shows, and sometimes it kind of gets overlooked. It's kind of like, okay, what do you do against the guy who pulls in with a stock car 34? Yeah, he bought the car. Yeah, it's cool, but it's stock at the end of the day, and it has the wow factor. But then you have your car where everything is literally one off for the car. Like, my, my, do you feel like it's judged right? My opinion on that, and this is just based off of going to a bunch of shows over the last handful of years, mm-hmm. I don't give a fuck about the JDM Legend cars anymore. Yeah. Supras, GTR, NSX. NS, NSX, you don't really see them often. Okay. And I'm, I'm going to get to why I don't give a fuck about the JDM Legend cars anymore. Okay. Because, bro, you go to shows and you see 100 of them. So the wow factor yeah. is gone. Yeah. And I'm a Honda nigga, so it's like, bro, two, like one of, one, at least one of the, the NSX more specifically, bro, you're a Honda dude, you see those at Honda shows. Yeah. You're gonna see a couple of the new ones, you're gonna see a bunch of the old ones. Do mm. you like the new one? Bro, at first I didn't like the new one. I thought it looked like a fucking, a little kid matchbox car. <laughs> I'm like, all right, this, this cute, like, yeah. it's way overpriced and it's mm. cute. I seen one of them maybe towards the end of the summer last year, a red one driving down Route 1. Mm. Dog. It's getting on the highway. This nigga drove past him. Like, nah, fuck. I got to see this shit up close. Yeah. Gunned it, chasing down the highway, just rode past him, just staring at the car halfway down the fucking highway. They look yeah. nice. There's some cars that grow on you, dude. No, that was 100% one of, one of them. You know, because look at the space that we're at now. Like, I'm not even going to lie to you, bro. There's no way that you could have told me even five years ago that I would be looking at Hyundai's and be like, damn, that actually look kind of nice. Like, yes, the, some of them, I seen it, yo, I seen the Genesis, the truck, mm-hmm. and the first time I saw those taillights, I was like, yo, what the fuck is that? And I was like, damn, that the actually looks hideous, really, but... oh my God, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I was like, damn, that truck's different, it hit different. Even then, like, I was driving by the other day, and obviously in, in the BMW, you get, you know, certain type of attention that you don't want. And the car flew by me and it sounded, I was like, what the hell is that? I looked, it was like an Elantra N. And I was just like, damn, I didn't know those sound like they had burble from the factory and all this other stuff. And I would have never pictured in a hundred million years that 
a Hyundai would have Verbal from no, the factory. No, that wouldn't have been yeah, a car. No, no, nah, nah, not at all. So we talked about traveling to shows and things like that. Now let's move towards the clubs. What's it like being in a club? Um, and what clubs have you been in? I've been in a couple. Um, when I first got into the scene, I was in cartel for a short little decent amount of time. Mm-hmm. Whatever happened with that, happened with that. Um, I can respect d- it. Differences. Yeah. Dif- <laughs> differences. And that happens. That happens. Yeah, it some comes people with the grow, territory. Some people grow apart. Yeah, it comes with the territory. Like, people start off, and not even, like, specifically them, because, mm-hmm. like, you already know how that goes. Niggas yeah. start get mad sensitive. But you start off being cool with people, and then you spend time with them, and you're like, oh, nah, you're a funny ass nigga. I can't fuck with you no more. That At happens. least for me, that's how I operate. Like, if you show me that you're a clown, I'm going to treat you as such. Mm-hmm. I have way too high of like morals and standards for myself on like who I fuck with. Yeah. Because I don't really need to fuck with nobody. Yeah. I'm fam. I'm, at this point in my life, I'm old. But I go to work. I go to the crib. Sometimes I do car shit. Yeah. If I don't gotta fuck with people, I don't gotta fuck with people, and that's cool. Yeah. But, but I feel like I, there's a flip side to that though, because once you find a decent set of people that you actually rock with, they end up becoming more than friends. Not nah, for a sure. As, and that's as why time I'm, goes, you find people. And I guess that's why it kind of hits more because you kind of hold that person in a higher regard nah, and a higher sure. standard than just the average person. For sure. You know? Like that's why with like DJ or like even Eli, Cassie, a few other handful of people that mm-hmm. like I fuck with like heavy, yeah. still current day, years later, I met through the original club that I was in. I didn't know these niggas through this, through yeah. anything else outside of that. Like, they're all younger than me. There's really no reason for me to know them yeah. in regular life if it wasn't for car shit. Mm-hmm. But I started with the with Cartel, uh, was there for a bit, was by myself for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, ended up in BLR for a decent amount of time. I'm going to go in BLR. How'd little. you get into BLR? That's just a, such a niche type of group. The crazy shit is BLR, and it sounds fucked up to say it out loud, BLR started as a joke. Mm. I was at a Honda Day or IFO, I can't remember which one it was, and Franklin was there. You know Franklin with yeah. the glasses? Mm-hmm. Franklin was there and just fucking around making jokes. I'm like, yo, I'm like, what's up with a banner? And he's like, yo, if you want, he's like, I talk to Popo for you. He's like, I'll see what's up. And I'm like, yeah, hey, cool, no big deal. A week or two goes by. I'm like, I wonder, I'm like, let me see like what kind of person he is. If he was just talking out his ass or if mm-hmm. he's like legit. Because I didn't really know him that well at the time. Yeah. So I hit him up. I'm like, yo, I'm like, you end up talking to dude? And he's like, yeah. He's like, when do you want to meet him? And I'm like, oh, no, this nigga's not like a funny nigga. Like, mm-hmm. he was legit about what he said. So ended up going and linking with Anthony and Popo yeah. um, on some random shit, stopping shop parking on Route 16. Mm-hmm. Talked to them for a little bit. Popo, was, he told me, like, how they operate. Yeah. Which they operate totally different than anybody else. Mm-hmm. For some people, it may be bad. For some people, it may be good. Mm-hmm. I didn't mind it when I was there. Towards the end of it, just my thoughts and views on how I want to operate in the car shit yeah. was very different than how they operate. Okay. Some people may say that, oh, yeah, they go to shows and they just rack up awards. Mm-hmm. That's cool. I don't give a fuck about awards. Okay. Being around a bunch of niggas that like awards or want to go to car shows that build their cars for awards, and not even specifically them, but if you know anything about car shows and BLR, they fucking clean up. Yeah, that's true. They, that's they true. don't miss. There's yeah. really nothing that they go to that they don't clean up at mm-hmm. for out here anyways. Yeah. So it was like, for me, I didn't really give a fuck about that anymore. So I'm like, all right, cool. Like, I'm either going to go back to being by myself again or something else is going to come along the lines. Mm-hmm. Made the decision to leave very shortly after. Mm-hmm. Ended up in Stance. Okay. Stance is a very different club than BLR was what or do you mean? than Cartel is. Stance don't give a fuck. So do you feel like stance is different because, because as time goes on, it seems like you've grown and you've adapted to different aspects of the car scene and you've been able to pick and choose what you like, what you don't like, things like that. And do you think stance is just a better fit for where you are in life or do you feel like they're just a great group? Both. Both? Both. Okay. Both. Even if you are someone that current day does care about like car shows and shit mm-hmm. and like getting awards. And you want to go to car shows with niggas that have nice cars. Stance is the group for that. If your car is nice enough to get into Stance. Everybody go, everyone travels. There's mm-hmm. a bunch of us. Some people go here, some people go here, some people don't go anywhere. Yeah. Stance don't care what you do. Okay. 
that super chill about everything. It's like, all right, fuck it. Like, you want to go to clubs? Cool. I mean, you want to go to to shows? Cool. You want to come kick it with niggas and go party? If there's people in the in the group that do that, cool. If you yeah. don't have your car finished right now, also fucking cool. Mm. Just get your shit done at some point. Yeah. So it's like for me, that's cool. Like I fuck with that. I like the vibe of that. Where it's just like, all right, bro. Like you're here. You're one of us, and there's no pressure outside of that. Mm. I happen to in my head, I got a cool enough car that I'm with these niggas. Yeah. Like that's what got me in the door with these niggas, and then it turns out that guess what? Bunch of cool fucking guys. Yeah. <laughs> Can't go wrong with that. Yeah, Can't so go wrong with that. that. So we talked about the cars and things like that. And, you know, let's talk more about our scene up here. You know, with this podcast, I want to highlight not only the bad, but a lot of the good as well that we have up here. And I, one of my main things that I really want to change is like there isn't dead space above Connecticut. We have a lot of people. We have a lot of clubs. We have a lot of cars. And what do you feel like we're missing that other states have that stops us from being. For me personally, I feel like it's the media space because we have all the heavy hitter like content creators and things like that. They highlight the cars in the area. So you'll know a lot of people who are in Florida. You'll know a lot of people who are in New York, Jersey, Pennsylvania, Cali, like shit like that. But up here, there's only a handful of us. So what do you feel like is missing up here? To be honest with you, bro, more than anything, I feel like it's location. Yeah. Like, especially, obviously, like I said, being, like, further along in the scene now is, like, you get to talk to different people that want to do shows, or you get cool with people that do do shows. Mm. Like, for instance, with Tony, or, like, fucking Electro, anyone that, like, hosts shows that people know about, like, Mm. you get to, depending on how well you know the person, or, like, who you chop it up with, you get to see, like, all right, cool, this person's, like, constantly fucking with this one location. They got this location locked in. Mm. But then you come across people that want to do shows, like legit shows, not parking lot shit. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. Not like Fuddrucker shit. Mm-hmm. And no shot at nobody, but yeah. Fuddrucker shit. Yeah. Where anybody could really go in there, talk to somebody, and oh, mm-hmm. guess what? You got to meet him. Yeah. You want to do like some legit shit, there's really no location for it anymore. Do you feel like we have too many shows? Or, because I'll be honest, like I looked at the calendar for shows out of state. And that shit's crazy. Some oh, some weekends it's like three shows in one weekend. I got a list in my phone right now of, of like the out of state shows that I would want to go to. Mm-hmm. It's like eighteen shows. In there. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. Like before I slowed down with my events, dude. I went on tour and my tour was thirty seven shows, bro, in one summer. It's and crazy. that was wild. I was like, I'm not doing that again. No, I'm no, all no. set. I'm all set. It's too much. And you got kids too, so that's wild. Yeah, yeah, and that's the reason why I stopped. Because no lie, I started realizing like, yo, I'm literally robbing my kids today. Something. No, hundred percent. And I can't do that anymore. Because like you're having fun and they're getting the short end of it. So here we are. Do you feel like we need more shows up here, or do we need to introduce? Do we need to host our own shows up here, or do we need to have people from outside come and host shows up here? Because you know Tony Evo is going to happen. Yeah. That's Rhode Island. Yeah. And then you have Import Expo. Yep. That's going to happen at Gillette. How do you feel about people coming into our backyard? To be honest, I kind of feel like that's what we need right now. Yeah. Like the local shows, quote unquote, that we have, or the local people that are throwing the shows right now, Mm. that's cool. But because there's not, I don't know, I guess we don't have as big of an internet presence. Yeah. We have individual cars as opposed to a state. Mm Mm-hmm. Where, like, New York, like, niggas are going to go to New York for pretty much anything. Yeah. They're going to go to Jersey for pretty much anything. Mm -hmm. If you're in Cali, you're going to go to pretty much anything they do in Cali. Mm -hmm. Miami, Atlanta, et cetera, et cetera. Philly, like, you're going to go there because those states are known for a majority of their cars being high-quality cars. Or well-looking cars, anyways. Out here, we got that, but it's like, who the fuck knows that outside of us? True. So, like kind of the media yeah, we, thing. We got a bunch of clubs out here and shit. We mm-hmm. have a bunch of photographers out here. We have a bunch of, like, video dudes out mm-hmm. here. Fucking Miller, you, et yeah. cetera, et cetera. Will. Like, you got all them people, but it's like, who the fuck really knows about it? And do you feel like that's our fault? Like, kind of like a consistency thing? No, I just don't think that there was... Or a support thing. I don't think it's a support thing either. I think we just had a fucked up transition from the older guys to the younger guys that are doing it now. Yeah. Well, that's true. 
Because if they was like, if we were to garner more support and big up each other, yeah, that definitely would probably change. I mean, that would scene. help. But you got to think about it like this, right? Mm-hmm. So let's say Quells in the JDM Mass days, mm-hmm. or Mass Tuning, which is same time period yeah. in early days of Beast Coast. What really came after them that kind of followed that up? It was it was it's dead just, space for a while. Yeah, it was up just, until you have the guys that are doing shit now. Yeah. So it's like if we didn't have that gap in space, it's like all right, cool shit would probably be a lot better off. Because mm-hmm. like oh, who didn't know about mass tuning shit back then? That was of age. JDM mass yeah. East Coast shit. Like bro, I, when I first built the ILX, I got a random post on. The Beast Coast page was gassed. Yeah. I haven't been excited about shit else in the car scene, <laughs> period, except for that. And yeah. I was like, oh, no, nah, that's it. Like, I don't have to do anything else with this car. Like, this was it. Mm. Just because of what Beast Coast was and is trying to come back and be yeah. with the collective and shit last year. But it's like, bro, outside of the three things that I named, what the fuck else was there? Not really much. Bro. Car clubs. What car clubs are still around from that time other than BLR? For me, to be honest with you, Car- let me rephrase that: current car clubs, not niggas that was in a club ten years ago. All right, that so still bring it three or four people. All right, because for me, honestly, so for being from, because I was a promoter and I was doing Twitter status and we were doing the local meets, mm-hmm. um, bouncing around everywhere. Dude, we was doing Framingham, Worcester, up north, all that stuff like that. So there's not. It's, you don't see the longevity of people, honestly, because no. meet New England, that's kind of gone now. That, I don't yeah, know. I'm not sure. That, that's pretty much gone now. Um, but and even, then you have Next Gen that's popping up now. They're doing their thing. Even with the... So, but then as far as the clubs, though, you have BLR, you have Stanton. And I, I, remember, when, I remember when these guys used to friggin' first pull up to my events. And I was like, bro, what? Yeah. Like, those cars were just... But it, they stood on what they believed in. No, and, I and they never caused no problem with me. So that's why I was nah, always love with even, me and even those guys. Even current day, like, bro, you know, a big thing that we are told yeah. and, like, everyone else tries to push is, like, bro, like, no drama with them. Yeah, yeah. Whether it be amongst ourselves or with other niggas, like, kind of mm-hmm. just keep it over there. Mm-hmm. Which is why Stance, I feel like, is the quality of a club that it is. But then you do see other clubs trying to come up, but it's more of a consistency thing. Like you see Trench Boy coming, then you see um, Unique Shout Illusions, the then you see uh, there's other clubs. It's just there's no. I feel like what they're lacking is the media support. There's nobody out there really shooting all their cars to say, okay, you know what? Say if, the big thing that we had back then was like Pass Mag. Yeah. And with Pass Mag, you can see all the features and everything like that, and. Even if you featured one of the members from the clubs, everybody was excited and stood up and support. Yeah, 100%, because they were in the club of said person. But now you don't have the media space right now that's highlighting these cars. Because the only media space, the media outlet that you have is Instagram. True. And even if, when you post on Instagram, how many of like your niggas is actually really not just trying to feed the algorithm, but really like supporting your build and actually commenting? On your page. To be honest with you, bro, you get a lot of support. Like, if you got a cool car, like, you're going to get support regardless. Mm-hmm. Whether it be from the homies or randoms yeah. on IG. Like, a cool car is a cool car. People yeah. are going to fuck with it or they're not going to fuck with it. Yeah. A big problem to, to what you said is, bro, it's Instagram. Nobody gives... The way Instagram is set up right now, pictures don't do shit. No. Nah. We can go do a shoot tomorrow. It's really not. A thousand pictures out of that shoot. We could be there for four fucking days taking pictures. Because I feel now Instagram Nobody's is... going to give a fuck about them. But Instagram is really only a trending audio app. Absolutely. That's, Instagram has become... It's not photos anymore. It's literally a music app. Yeah. It's not even really the reels anymore either. It's if you what can, song you put with the reel. You could put bullshit up. Yeah. Four second video and a cool little snippet of that one dope song right now. Out of here. Well, I was just talking to my boy Truman about this and... As I try to like mess around with the video space and and just you know practice and just mess around a couple of things like there's videos that I put my time and effort into, and I might get thousand to three thousand views on it. 
I have a video on my phone right now, and I literally took this video on my cell phone, and it's just under a million views. Yeah, I believe it. And it's crazy how that app works, but that's why you really can't, because some people really go hard and they really get vested in the app itself, oh, yeah. and get vested in social media and actually have go through like mental, sh whatever you want to call it. Shit, shit I weird. don't get it, shit but weird. that's because I'm, probably because I'm older, and, I'm, weird. and I know what it's like to be outside it's you before that. Ass. <laughs> <laughs> like you've been outside and you put your hand on some grass before. Like you know, that's what the problem is. It's, it's weird. How do you feel about the social media space and coming up in it now? It's... I'm in a weird spot. Because, like, yeah, cool, I'm older, but I'm not, like, too old for yeah. social media right now. Mm. I be around enough young niggas. Would and you like, put your age in the bio? That nigga, I'm 33, bro. I just turned 33 last week. Oh, man. I'm an old right. nigga now. Bro, I'm washed. That's Super washed. Nah, nah. Trust got me. You got, you got some beard, years. You got to catch up. Nah, I'm washed. Trust me. When I tell some of these things my age, they're like, what? <laughs> you say, say your age, motherfucker. like, damn. It's like, you still outside? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, you but nah, bro, the, the social media shit is cool. Because, mm -hmm. like, you get to meet a bunch of dope people, like, through, the, through Instagram, Facebook, whatever the case may be mm -hmm. that you're fucking with right now that... You wouldn't know these people. So social media is actual social media app. No, for absolutely. You. For me, that's that's how I use it. Like, okay. I don't take that shit too serious. If I don't post nothing, cool. Like, yeah. I don't get no likes on shit, cool, fam. I hide all the likes on all my shit. Mm -hmm. You go on my IG right now. You're not gonna see likes on anything. I don't give a fuck about it. It's yeah. cool, whatever. I nigga, I like these pictures. Mm -hmm. Dope. I'm posting them. Yeah. You like the picture? Awesome. Somebody else don't like the picture, eat a dick. I don't give a fuck. It's Instagram, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's Instagram, man. Like, I don't care, bro. Like, this shit's not Yeah, funny. it gets weird, though, with yeah. some of these people don't know BS. Nah, some people, some people use it the right way. Most people use it the wrong way. Okay. okay. Like, you have people that build brands off of it. Mm. You have people that continue brands off of it. You have people that decide they want to open, like, a legit business. For it's instance, a tool. Yeah, for instance, Balance Auto or mm. Stop and Stance. Mm. Or even you with this, like you're trying to, to keep everything going. Mm -hmm. and it's like, bro, social media helps. Yeah, it does. It it's really like, all right, that's cool. Yo, you opened up a shop where you're doing air ride installs mm -hmm. or you're doing tent. Let's just say tent because that's yeah. some calm shit. You open up a tent shop. That's cool. You went, you done tented 14 of your boys' cars. Mm -hmm. You got nobody else caught a tent now. Mm -hmm. You get on fucking Instagram or Facebook, you post that shit. Now you got 600 people's cars that you've done. Okay. It helps it's true. It's true. if you use it's it the true. right way. Or you could be a dickhead and be on there hating on everybody else that does tent shit, mm -hmm. and now your business flops. Now you look like a jackass. Yeah. It's on you. Depends on how you use it. You could be smart about it, your shit could blow up, or you could be a dickhead and your shit go nowhere. So we've talked about the past and the present. Let's talk a little bit about the future. What how's how's life for you right now in the balance of cars and life? Life is cool right now. Yeah, I've, I finally, I finally found where I want to be in both. Yeah, where like where I want to be in both. And um, where's that, bro? Just comfortable. Yeah, cozy. Yeah, yeah, cozy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> fucking cozy. As cliche as it is, bro, cozy. Like yeah. everything right now is just calm. Like. Work is good, home life is good, car shit is good. Like, so you found a balance. Yeah, fi finally found a balance. No pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know. Shameless plug. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, bro, finally found just like a nice middle ground for everything. Where like I'm not doing too much car shit where it's fucking up my house shit. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing too much work where it's fucking up the car shit. Yeah. And and however you want to interchange it, like nothing clashes with anything. So what's what do you see in your future now? Do you want to keep the ILX? Is it a car that you haven't bought yet that you really? I got I got a like lot of cars put, that if, I want to buy. So if if God puts you in, in a blessed position that you can cop something nice, let's get let's do something nice, some that you can pull out for the shows, and something that you just want to flex in. What are those three cars? Something that I will pull out the show. Well, to answer your original question and to answer the current question, the ILX isn't going anywhere. Oh, where? That that car is giving me too much of a fucking headache for me to want to get rid of it. <laughs> I want to get. I want to. like it, every car. Fam, I want to park that shit into a wall at least three times a week. Oh my but god! Because of that, the car's not going nowhere. Okay. So that would be the show car because it's the current show car. Like, all right, cool. okay. we're gonna go out with some shit. This is the one. Mm -hmm. Um. Shit, a, a flex car, bro. I've been really been liking the 190e um, Mercedes Benz. The really, Benz. 
them square joints. Yeah, I like, know. I like know. The one Mina has. I know. Bro, I don't know what it is after seeing his car and then the girl, I want to say she's from overseas, um, mm-hmm. Mika Dory. Okay. With all the engraved shit. Bro. It's tough. Fuck it's a that tough car. Build. How yeah. far would you go with it? Would you go only in plus, keep it simple, or would you actually like... Nah, I'd probably force it. Yeah. Like, that would be a car I'd have to force. Yeah. Because it's like, all right, it. it looks cool, like, how it is, but, like, I'd probably force that one. Okay. That'd be a car I'd spend too much money on, like, a jackass, and be like, all right, fuck. Like, I spent way too much to get rid of this shit, too. Not something nice that you got to keep stuck. You got to keep it stuck. You can't Damn. touch nothing on it. Damn. Something I got to just keep exactly how it is, brand new out the box. Can't tint it. You can't lower it. Tint the shit? No, can't even tint it, bro. You gotta leave that car alone, bro. Um, All right, I'm gonna give you tints. Nah, nah, nah. Because factory nah. comes with tints sometimes. It depends on the car, yeah, for sure. Um, what's the the new newer Lexus that looks like the fucking Batmobile? The, the LFA? RC. Oh, the, yeah, LFA that shit. Yeah, bro, one of those. Yeah, that car from the dealership is fire. I would you would stack one of those? Hundred percent. If I'm big enough to fit in the shit, for sure. Like <laughs> it, it looks like a big ass car, but the inside might be tiny. True. Like the Supra, fam. The Supra. Is I know. Mad small. I know. It's okay for us, bro. It's ridiculous. I sat in that car at the International Auto Show, and I was like, "Yeah, I gotta." Yeah, no. Nah, sure. Something it's was gonna touching the steering wheel. I was like, "Yo, yo." <laughs> I was like, "Yo, I can't do this." Second, you get in, it, it's like, "Oh yeah, now I got the leg in there. I gotta get back." Nah, in. it's like the S two thousand. Love the car, man, but that car is body shaming. You know how big I look in that car, yo? It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. And I'm bigger than you. I don't know. Well, I didn't want to say it, but it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bigger than you. Okay? So it's like, nigga, if you felt like that getting in one of them things, I brought it Yo, like, see, oh. you in the S2000? I tried it. Yo, what? I, I tried it. I tried one with a roll cage. Even worse. How long till you get another techie? So I just sold the last one, like a week ago. Beginning of the, yeah, beginning of last week. I just sold the, the most recent one. Mm. I'm just not there right now. I'm gonna be honest. Like if you gotta with, get like a, with like an old car right now, period, I'm just not there. All right, so dream techie build, let's talk about it. Motor, chassis, and color. And wheels. <sighs> Motherfucker. Alright, so chassis would be DB8. Okay. Four door. I'm I'm too big for the coupe. Okay. I've had three of them. I just not a mm-hmm. big nigga car. Yeah. Um, the four door is not really a big nigga car either. But, but we can make it work. We can put that yeah, seat nah, all the way back. Drop the seat back a little bit. It's good to go. Um, <laughs> shit. <laughs> so DB8. Um, for color, I'd either do a black one. Mm. Pause. Oh, that sounded fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> we don't get a pause counter on this one, yo. We're going to do a pause counter. crazy. <laughs> um, but there's also a... I don't even want to say the color because like, I know I'm going to see someone in like a Honda Accord with mm. the color. There's an OEM color that came on those cars. Mm. Now, I'm not going to say the shade of, but mm. I will go with that color. Mm. I'll show you the color. All right. Yeah. Let me let me see. See. yeah I'm let me see. Come up with another... Hold up. So are you a Phoenix Yellow or a Championship White type of guy? I like Championship White more. Mm. Personal preference, I like. I would choose that. So it's kind of tough to tell in this picture. But oh, that, what? Yeah. So OEM color. Yeah, I know, but Fair. damn. Yes. I don't want to say that color out loud because I might the dialect. I'm gonna put a screenshot up in this clip right in this box right here. <laughs> the ILX might yeah. be that color next year, possibly. Uh, oh so, shit, for real. Yeah, I might. Mm. Cause I'm not really spending no burn on the car this year. Mm-hmm. Like I like where the car is at. Mm-hmm. I could come out with the same color next year, or yeah. I could change it. Kind of leaning more towards that color. Mm-hmm. We'll see. Right. But also for a color that I can say, mm-hmm. we would do. I'd probably do Midori Green as like a second option. That's my heart right there. Yeah, this will be. I had this will be that I know, color. <laughs> I know it was a good color. So you know, as we wrap up, wrap up the pod, and I appreciate you stopping by and everything like that. Um, I always ask my guests two questions. We'll start with the first one. For you, what was the best year in the car scene for you? Shit. To be honest with you, bro, the summer of COVID. Really? Yeah. Some summer of COVID or when they were still doing the races at Wendy's. 
No shit. It'd be one of one of those two like time yeah. periods. Um, cause the Wendy's races was just the beginning of it for me. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, all right, this is different. Like I don't know what the fuck is going on here, but I, I love. But it. I like it. But yeah, I like, like it. I like yeah. it. Like mm-hmm. this shit is smooth. But then, bro, the summer of COVID, like, okay. was, granted, it was like a fucked up time for everybody, myself included. Yeah. But, bro, it was just everybody was just genuine about what they were trying to do during that time. Yeah, everybody. It had seemed to find like out nobody so was on like fraud shit then. Yeah. And then during that time period, also, like, I met a bunch of people, like DJ, Eli, Cash, Jack, mm. niggas like that. Where it's like, bro, I met y'all during this time, yeah. and we're still cool. Okay. So it's like for me, it's like, all right, bro, I had mad fun with a bigger group of people during that time. Mm-hmm. And out of that group of people, there's a handful of people that I'm still tight with. Okay, I can respect it. Now, the final question, and I always give this disclaimer not to be morbid or anything like that, but at the end of the day, what do you want to be known for amongst your friends, peers, family, you know, within the car scene? What do you want to be known for? What's the mark you want to leave? So I got two answers to that. First one, just being the coziest nigga ever. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> just, like, bro, at all at all times, just limbs relaxed, mm-hmm. like just for every situation. Okay. But then, for something that really means like a lot to me, I don't want every anybody to ever be able to like factually say like, "Yo, this dude was a fraud." I can respect that. Like, he was fake with niggas, or he was doing funny shit, or anything like that. Like, I don't want anyone to ever be able to say that. Mm-hmm. So I operate that way yeah. at all times. I don't, if, for most people, how I speak, how I handle situations with people, mm-hmm. I'm brash. Yeah. Most people don't like that shit. I got kind of a reputation as a dickhead. It is what it is. Nah. But I'm honest. <laughs> I'm honest with everybody in all situations. Yeah. Like, because I would like for people to be like that with me. So it's like if everybody that I come across, which isn't real, but mm-hmm. if everyone that I could come across would be as genuine about just the interactions with me as I am with them, yeah. sure would be cool. But even if it's not that, at least I know on my end, I've been solid all the way through. Respect, respect. All right, my guy, I appreciate you stopping well, by. Once you already again, know. Yo, for real, for real. All right, guys, till the next time, y'all know the vibe. Stay up, stay blessed. Later. Peace.